Hey guys, how you doing? Fraser here. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to run through an acceleration session for rugby. So this workout can be done as a standalone training session. We often do this two days after we've played a game. So our first performance uh, day of the week is acceleration focused. Obviously I tailor it towards the group of players and the guys and this is going to give you a good example today of the kind of stuff that we do to make our players faster. Or you can use this session going into a skill session if you have to kind of combine your training a little bit because of time constraints then you can do something like what you're going to see now and then going into some sort of low level skills work where you're working your skills really hard but you're not combining that with fitness or other physical attributes. So you're working on your acceleration and then you're working on whatever rugby skills um, you, need, you need to be working on. So the first exercise we're going to look at are wall drives. Now, if you follow me on social media, on YouTube and Instagram, you'll know that I categorize my speed um, exercises broadly into skill drills or stimulus drills. Okay, now this exercise is a skill drill. There's two reasons why we use wall drives. The first reason is to reinforce good posture or acceleration based posture, let's say that. So what I mean by that is we're looking that the, the stance leg is, is extended. Okay, we're extended through the knee and the hip. All right, in that flexed leg, we've pulled the toe up. So we're dorsiflexing in that flexed leg. So that's something to look out for when you're doing wall drives. The second reason we use wall drives is to learn to appropriately apply force into the ground. So A March is a natural progression from wall drives. You're on the move, you're still working on knee drive, you're still looking at that propulsive step and making sure you're extended. Uh, and you have the time, because it's at a marching pace, you have the time to think through and make sure that you're moving right if you are perhaps learning running mechanics. Um, and if you're not and you're an expert, then it's just a natural segue to continue the warm up before you start moving faster and faster. So the A skip is just a natural progression from the A march. It's slightly more dynamic, it's done a little bit faster, but the same checklist is there for the stance leg, um, for the leading leg, are you dorsiflexing? All these things remain the same. You just bring in a little bit more rhythm to the movement. Again, it's great if you're, one, if you're learning uh, acceleration mechanics, or two, if you are already an expert and just warming up before you go in to running fast. So to get fast, you need to run fast. That is so true, okay? However, in the skill drills, it's all right to be thinking things through. It's all right to be slowing down because you're trying to address any energy leaks that are in your technique, which will then get carried over to um, the part of the training session where you're not thinking about anything and you're going as fast as you possibly can. Now, how you organize that in terms of the period of training that you're in comes down to your coach or yourself and, and your way of thinking. It might be that for a period of time, you need 70% of your session to be focused on skill drills to address energy leaks and techniques. And that 30% is going to be on the stimulus drills or vice versa. It depends on where you are in the season and you know what area you need to work on to become faster. So the next part of the session involves resisted sled sprints, which is one of the best ways to improve acceleration for rugby. Sled sprints are great because they are just that, they're sprints. So super specific to sprinting, you have a good stimulus drill there. And also because you have weight in tow, it's going to affect your trunk lean, which is something that we want to encourage and see when it comes to acceleration mechanics. So how much weight should you use when it comes to resisted sled sprints? It's a really good question. And if you check the description below, there's actually a link to a test that you can do to determine the exact right weight for you. Now, if you can't carry out that test for whatever reason, maybe you don't have light gates, just follow the guidance that I've left below in the description. That's something that we use here and it's posit positively affected our, our 10 meter times year on year at Biela Rugby. The last part of this example acceleration session is of course free sprinting, 10 meter starts. Okay, now you can use a three point start with your hand on the ground or you can use a two point start as I'm demonstrating here. The important thing is that you're running as, as fast as you can. You don't need to think about anything when it comes to the stimulus drill and even better if you have either 
light gates so you can check your times or if you're just racing against teammates that's absolutely fine all right do your 10 meters take at least 60 seconds so you've got full recovery even more if you need it because the idea is that you're running as fast as you possibly can guys that's all for today thank you very much for watching my video i would ask if you liked it to please show me that you liked it with a thumbs up very much appreciated of course if you know someone that will benefit from the video please do share with them and if you haven't done so already please consider subscribing and that way i will see you on the next video thanks again guys ciao cheers